yeah, people were like always looking up for Tor. Uh, I just heard his name first time when I was like 16 or so. And then there was a documentary about him on the Norwegian TV. They actually made with, where they into you, Phil Ivey and stuff like that. So then we like really got respect for the guy, old guy. And so it just carried on. And then I met him in Vegas a couple of times and he's always really nice to every, like all the players, not even, not just Norwegians, but every kind of peoples. And he's like, he's a good example for how poker players should behave. And he's a good guy. Uh, I started playing poker like 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago. And we started in Norway, in Oslo, and I played at the racetrack. I played in the woods with people, you know, we were living close by it. So then we started to have clubs in Oslo. I was very young when I started, so I didn't go out traveling before I was maybe mid-20s or something. And then I found uh, America, which poker was very, very big, so I moved there. Poker came naturally to me. You know, I was playing a little bit pool. I was always into gambling, went to the horse track when I was seven years old, you know, lived close by. And I started to shoot pool, which I became pretty good at, to beat the world champion in, uh, directly on television in Norway. And then I started to play poker, so I gave all those things up. It was only poker that was fun. But I had a brother that was nine years older than me, and he played a little bit of poker. So I was with him watching. So how I discovered it was he was sitting playing poker, went to the bathroom, and he told me to play a hand. He was winning. So, you know, I've been watching for a long time, so I played a hand, and when he came back, I had a lot of money in front of me. So that's how it started, kind of. I never thought of what I was going to be when I was that young. It was just poker was so, meant so much to be so, so fast. So it, I never thought of anything else. I just wanted to play poker. So that's what I did. I have no idea what I would have done without poker. I mean, I probably would have been sitting in an office somewhere working my ass off, but I, I don't know actually. Yeah, I've been talking to him about that because I, I also know all his friends from back in the days and uh, they always talk about the old days, back in the 50s when it was games, or back in the 70s when it was games they were playing like all around Oslo. Like oh, there was poker clubs back then as well, and roulette clubs and blackjack. It looks like they had a really fun time back in the days, and everybody had money. So it was uh, looked. I wish I wish I played in that game. <laughs> It was a little easier to being in Las Vegas to find a poker game than it was in Oslo, that's for sure. And I had a good start first time I got there. I, least, I, won, I won a World Series bracelet and I won all the money in the cash games. I played with the biggest guys in the world that was well known back then, you know, Doyle Bronson, Chip Rees and these guys. Stu Younger became a good friend of mine and we played poker every day together. We were partying together but he beat me in poker, he was very good. But he could be bad too. But that was the guys I played with, so I learned in a harsh school. They were good players. But I survived among them, yeah. Stu Younger, he was kind of, I think he was a little bit schizophrenic because he could be a very bad boy, but he was so kind and nice outside of poker. I mean, he was kind to everybody. In poker, he was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I mean, he was terrible, but he was, very nice and he was such a good player. I mean, he was impossible to beat. I think Noam Dalla that wrote a book about him, wrote good stuff about him, but he forgot that no limit told him to stop playing that in Las Vegas because of Stu Younger, because he couldn't beat him. So that game disappeared for many years when Stu was around. Stu will beat them all today. He, he would have been 30 years in front of this crew too like he was back then. He was so far ahead of all the poker players. But he could also lose, be a bad player sometimes when he had a lot of money because he didn't like money. But he, he played, uh, he got staked by the, by the Mafia a lot. You know, when he was broke, they gave him money to play and then he won. He always won when he got staked. Well, I, re I remember his uh, last couple of months very well because everybody in Vegas gave him up. I wasn't in Vegas, I was in California playing seven card stud poker because I owed so much money in Vegas from gambling. So I always spent 
to play a few months and then I paid my debts. And then the games was very good there. And Stewie called me one day and asked for money, of course, because he was in bad shape. And I said, come out here. I said, it's good games and I give you 10,000. Maybe we can build up something. I didn't stake him and he came out there. We were staying in a motel across from the casino and uh, he, uh, I think he won about 200,000 in a week, but he was in very bad shape. I remember he walked from the casino to the motel, he just fell down in the street and he was about 60 pounds. So I lifted it up and took it to the room and called the doctor and they gave him some kind of shot with vitamins or something. The next day he went back to Vegas. And I think it was two weeks later, I went by him in the at the motel because I bought him a, a friend of mine and me, we bought him a football ticket to watch the American football. He loved that. So he had something to watch on Sunday. Uh, that was that week he died. That was the last time I saw him. It was very, very sad, of course, because we liked him a lot. He was a lovely guy when he wasn't bad. <laughs> Poker I kind of brought me into a lot of stuff. Got to know a lot of famous people, fun people. Like I played poker for Larry Flint for like 10 years. I was his man in the poker game. It was his poker game. He played seven card stud poker. And uh, I think we played about 10 years. We made good money, but there was a lot of fun around it, of course. He did stake me in the game, Larry. Somehow he heard that I was a good stud player and he wanted to hire a good poker player. <laughs> no, to play for him in his game. He didn't want to learn anything. He liked to lose. <laughs> he was the game. I mean, everybody won, of course, because he was such a bad player. But, you know, we became good friends because I won a lot of money for him. And he liked that when he counted at the end of the night. He didn't like it when I was losing, but we had a make-up deal, so I had to catch up before I got in the money again. But that was some fun years, I must say that. So many strange people in there. And his wife died, and he had a nurse for a few years, and she wanted to marry him. And she was nursing him for all these years, and he said yes, and we had his bachelor party in Beverly Hills, and that was some party. <laughs> they cost like $2 million, and that's what we got to spend, but after flying in all the girls, there was no money for food, so we had to spend a little extra. <laughs> but that was a crazy, crazy party. <laughs> As I said, I met a tour a bunch of time in Vegas when he lived in the States. Now he lives in Norway, so I meet him a bunch. But uh, he always told me about stories like when he used to go out with like party on the Playboy Mansion and hang out with the celebs in Hollywood and like just having a blast. And it looked like such a fun life just to move to Vegas, live up gambling and just party around when you're 18, 19, 20. That's a dream. And a bunch of girls and of course everything. You had the whole package. So of course that was an inspiration to make it, <laughs> to make a living like that. Well, one thing after this new poker came with all these kids, I got a lot of new friends, but they're like four times younger than me. <laughs> so it's a problem. It wasn't a problem. I was out partying with them every time I met them, out for dinners and partying. I was the last one to bed. No, I don't do that anymore. But I got so many young friends, it's crazy. I mean, uh, I meet them, they call me, they want to take me out, they want to do this, they want to do that. And that's very nice, of course, uh, when you are my age and I have all these young friends. I think I'm happy to have all these guys around me. I mean, I'm the happy one, I think. Um, when I got the diagnosis of cancer that was terminal and was very bad, I had the surgery the day after they uh, found it in America. And um, the doctor said I had a few months and, um, because it was bad. It's still bad, but uh, I went back up to Norway, started treatments. And uh, that's almost three years ago, and I feel good. And I have the poker, I have the guys around me. I have my American wife that takes very good care of me. She, must be, she makes me eat healthy and uh, do stuff to stay alive. And um, 
I'm just very strong. That's what the doctors say. They can't believe it. They say I'm not built of blood and flesh. They said I'm of steel. So it's it's kind of a little fun. I'm a special case for the hospital too because they don't understand why I'm holding so good. So I'm telling them I've taken so many many bad beats in poker. So I'm used to these bad beats. So it just flashes off, you know, flashes off me. I never met Thor before you got the cancer, where you ever been, like, had the flu even. Like, he's always been, have a, have a, his health has always been like a, a fortnight. It's like nothing ever happened to him. Even though he was just sitting around playing poker and drinking, he still had, like, a body like a 20 or so, so. <laughs> you know, I've been dealing with this now for almost three years, and I don't even think of it. I've been going on chemo for three years, I mean, the highest doses, and I have no problems with it. I don't, don't even feel it, and it's very strange, because people get sick of that too. I don't, I haven't had a sick day because of it. I mean, I never got the flu or a cold or anything, so I'm in good shape. I have a little bit of pain once in a while, but it's nothing. It's, uh, it's okay. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. It is incredible. I appreciate small things so much more than what I did in the old days, before in life. I mean, every little thing I see that's nice, I can fill a tear, you know, it's more sentimental and uh, it comes some good, good out of it too. I changed a little bit. I feel like I became a better person because I want to help people, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I read about it and uh, yeah, that's all it is. The important thing for the poker players is to be nice, I think. It's such a nice community. It's always somebody that's tried to destroy it, but so many nice people in there, and as long as they're staying nice and can handle the bad beats, they'll be okay, you know. It's not much to it. I think so. Yeah. Appreciate the small things, maybe. Yeah, yeah, appreciate the small things. That's very important in life, I think.